In this video, we look at the characteristics of different programming paradigms. So what do we mean by paradigm? To describe an example of a pattern, or in a computing context, to describe an example of a way of doing things. Software is written using programming languages. As programmers, we've come to expect programming languages to include facilities like variables, loops, conditions, arrays, etc. The syntax or commands are different, but the underlying concepts haven't changed. This is our programming paradigm, the way we do things. For example, Python, Visual Basic and C Sharp are all from the same family. However, there are other ways of doing things. In other words, there are other programming paradigms. Most programming languages in most programming paradigms are said to be Turing complete. Turing complete languages can solve all the problems that a computer is able to solve. So if most languages in most paradigms can solve all possible problems, then why do we even need different programming paradigms? Well, the simple answer is that some problems are simply better suited to being solved by using a certain paradigm. We can sort all programming languages into two very broad and rough categories, low level and high level. At the very bottom, we have what we think of as machine code. This is the least abstract. It's closest to what actually happens on a computer. Machine code is programmed directly in ones and zeros. These translate into matching electrical signals, e.g. one for high voltage or zero for low. Assembly language comes next. This uses short code words known as mnemonics. Each mnemonic matches a specific sequence of ones and zeros. There's a one-to-one -one relationship. It's written in assembly language and translated by a machine-specific assembler. The first languages that could go further than machine code and assembly language were developed in the early 1950s, starting with Fortran. These languages all had a one-to-many relationship as each instruction could give rise to many lines of machine code. Because they were so much more complex, they were called high-level languages. High-level languages broadly fit into two further categories, imperative and declarative. Imperative languages use statements that change a program's state in the form of sequence, selection, iteration, etc. They consist of commands for computers to perform and focus on, describing how a program operates. Declarative languages, on the other hand, focus on what the program should accomplish. However, they're not covered in any great detail in the specification. There are two main paradigms that fall under the heading of imperative languages that you need to know about. Procedural programming and object-orientated programming. Procedural programming is a type of imperative programming paradigm where a program is built from one or more subroutines, e.g. procedures and functions. Object-orientated programming paradigms are a more modern extension of the imperative programming approach that focuses more on a modular approach to programming. We show you here a quick visualization of the evolution of programming languages and their paradigms. Starting on the far left, we have the early days, low level languages with machine code and assembly. Coming into the 50s, we had our very first ever high level languages in Fortran, quickly followed by COBOL. Languages such as BASIC and C started in the 60s and the 70s, we had an explosion of languages C, C, Sharp, Java and every other language we know today. So it's important you understand some of the main features and differences between these two programming paradigms. 
Let's break this down into features, data, program structures, and program logic. So features. Procedural programming focuses on sequence, selection, and iteration. Object-orientated programming focuses on sequence, selection, iteration, plus the concepts of inheritance, objects, classes, and encapsulation. In procedural programming, data is stored in local or global variables and accessible to other parts of the program using parameter parsing. With object orientation, we store data in attributes and we conceal it from other parts of the program via a method called encapsulation. In procedural programming, our main programming structures are procedures and functions. In object orientation, they're classes, methods and instances. The program logic in procedural programming is expressed in a series of procedure calls. In object orientation, it's based on models and behavior. Now we'll be looking at object oriented programming paradigm in a lot more detail in the videos in the rest of this section. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we mean by the term programming paradigm?